In this lecture, we are going to talk about general terms used for reinforcement work. The reinforcing steel bars are also called rebar. It can be metal bars, or wires that are mixed in concrete, to act together to resist forces. When used together it strengthens concrete, and improves the mechanical performance, and forms an RCC structure. Steel and concrete have nearly equal thermal expansion coefficient, and so when used together, during expansion, it does not produce additional stresses. The tensile strength of concrete is 5 to 7 percent of its compressive strength which is very poor. To increase the tensile strength of concrete member, and to resist tension, steel bars are used. Steel strengthens the concrete, and improves mechanical performance of the structure. The reinforcement steel is a form of carbon steel, in which the iron mixed with small portions of carbon. The chart shows chemical composition of rebar. It has 99% iron and small traces of other elements. The main advantages of rebar are its ability to bend, it is tough, and it is easily available, it can be recycled and stretches under loading. Concrete cover, the least distance between reinforcement and concrete surface is known as concrete cover. The purpose of providing cover is to protect the reinforcement from corrosion, environment, thermal insulation from varying temperature, and fire. The standard specifications for providing cover are as following. For RCC slab it should be greater of 25 mm or the diameter of reinforcement. Same is for beam, that is greater of 25 mm or the diameter of reinforcement. For column, it is 40 mm. For lintel, weather shed or canopy, 15 mm. For column and wall footing, 50 mm. Chairs, chairs are metal supports for reinforcement, a certain height is to be maintained from bottom surface. It maintains proper positioning of rebar during concrete placement. Maximum spacing of chair is 1 meter or can be less as per requirements. Spacers, also known as concrete cover blocks. Splice, the method used to join the reinforcement bars, so that the force is transferred effectively from one bar to the other. It is achieved by different ways, such as lapping, welding, or coupling. Lap length. Lap length is the minimum length that must be provided if two bars are joined together for the forces to be transferred. It mainly depends on the concrete strength, type of concrete, and the yield strength of bar. Common lap length used are for slab it is 50d for beam and column, 40d if it is in tension zone and 24d if it is in compression zone. When two different diameters of bars have to be lapped, the lap length should be calculated based on the diameter of the smaller bar. Coupler Coupler are used to join two rebar without providing lapping. It avoids honeycombing. Ensure lapping or use of coupler are staggered. Development length is a minimum embedment length in order to transfer the bar force to surrounding concrete through bond. The formula to calculate development length is 57D for M20, 49D for M25, and 45D for M30, shown as development length, LD, of a footing. Bar spacing is the clear distance between different three bars. It cannot be less than 1 inch, and should at least be equal to diameter of bar. Pitch is the gap between deformations on a rebar, idest. It is center to center spacing between turns of a spiral. Stirrups are used to resist lateral shear stress and diagonal tension stress in RCC structure. Thus stirrups help to prevent buckling failure in columns. Depending upon the nature of construction, the different types of stirrups used in beam and columns are listed below. Single-legged stirrups, two-legged or double-legged stirrups, 
4 legged stirrups 6 legged stirrups hooks are the bend provided at the edge of the stirrups it helps for better bonding distribution bar these are thinner bars placed at right angle to the main steel it helps prevent cracking and load distribution dowel bars are short bars used to increase strength at construction joints <laughs>